Today, we're breaking down Mulan and the martial arts history behind the song, I'll make a man out of you. Don't move that mic up. You try to get these vocals in there. Most impressive. So we have Fa Mulan, uh, which you just correct me earlier, well, her name actually isn't Fa Mulan? That's correct. Uh, the historical character is the basis of a poem. It was Hua Mulan. There was evidence that there have been women in military history, particularly Chinese military history, when there was a, a dire need that participated and were very effective. Oh, wow. So let's dig into the historical accuracy of the training montage in the I'll Make a Man of You song portion. So the staff training is fairly historically accurate simply because the use of the spear was a very common weapon in infantry in that time period. So the training methodology that was less lethal was certainly common. When you see the group montage where they at first are very asymmetrical and then later everyone's in line and they're doing the same things at the same time. In the military application, being able to do things symmetrically and together is very important. So uh, being able to use the staff as a form of forms training, that's discipline. I feel like it's synonymous with <laughs> martial arts at this point where you're breaking a concrete block. So breaking things with your hand and with your head. I used to do it myself. Mm -hmm. I quit when I didn't put a towel on the thing and I ended up with oh. concrete fragments in my head one time. Yes. But the idea behind it is that you're really learning full commitment and the development of power as you push through uh, what would be considered an inanimate and hard object. Do you see a lot of influence from the Shaolin martial arts? So one of the fabled practices is iron palm training, where one slams their hand into that of first, it would have been beans, so that you can begin to condition your hands. Then it would have been pea gravel, so that you slam it into a whole series of gravel to create calluses and make it thicker. And then it said that they would use metal shavings and then heat the metal shavings so that your hands would become calloused oh, wow. and you could slam through the armor, the leather of another person. These are myths, yeah. uh, but there's some validity behind some of that training. It's developing strength in the body and resolve in the mind. So we see Mulan fighting Li Sheng. Can you tell us about that hand-to-hand -hand combat? Sure. The model for the Gung Fu practice in this particular film was Sifu Mimi Chan, who practiced under her father, who is a master at a style called Northern Praying Mantis. And this is a derivative style of the Shaolin Temple. So it's characterized by beautiful, fluid movements, and her movements are remarkable. So this method of training and the sequence that we see with the use of the spin kick, this is training balance, accuracy, flexibility, fluidity, all of those factor into what you would use in a real life context. So then in the next scene, we have Li Sheng shooting arrows into like these fruits that I'm gonna say are pomegranates, because uh, the top. <laughs> <laughs> the sequence with the archery, mm -hmm. absolutely. Calvary, archery, use of weapons, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and they were all very heavily trained in the Chinese army at different points in history. So next up we have Li Sheng and Mulan deflecting rocks with a bow staff, but also with a bucket of water on their head. The contest is about being able to maintain stability and fluid motion, so maintaining the balance of the bucket of water on the head, and then being able to develop reaction timing. So now we're grabbing fish, like just <laughs> grabbing fish. I have tried to grab fish like that and have not been successful in doing so. <laughs> Was it used? No, I'd say so. I'd say you put a kid in a stream and there's a fish, he's gonna try to grab yeah. it. And, and will your reactions hone over time and get better at that? Yes, I would say absolutely. And try it. It is certainly not an easy yeah. thing to do. So we go from riverbank to a f meadow where Yao is trying to dodge flaming arrows. Yeah, the flaming arrow dodging. <laughs> being able to actually shoot at people with the flaming arrows or randomly shooting them in the dark and hoping people will evade them seems like 
that there would be an inordinate loss of man power. Think about it, those who knew me. That may be more for theatrical purposes than the actual training methodology. So now we're watching our trainees jump across large logs to do, I guess, get better balance. But this is something I, that I'm kind of familiar with because I see it in a lot of martial arts films. It is. It's something in traditional Gong Fu training that you see a fair amount of. Plum blossom poles are designed to teach balance. They're used uh, for forms training when one uses a weapon and balance is shifting from pole to pole. Hand-to-hand -hand movements, being able to do forms, also being able to exchange blows with an opponent. So it is used as a method of training. So next, what we see is the use of what appear to be fireworks, but in that context, they're not fireworks, it's the equivalent of artillery. So being able to use projectiles, gunpowder, that was something implemented by the Chinese armies at the time. So the turning point, and arguably the most famous part of the song, is when she figures out to wrap the weights together and climb up the pole to get the arrow that's shot to the top. I mean, how do you feel like this could be implemented and, and, and what does it really strengthen? So the actual application of climbing the pole we see in many modern contexts, Scottish games being able to climb up the pole, uh, lumberjack competitions being able to climb up the pole the fastest. Well, I think this is really a symbol of overcoming your personal obstacle, being able to get over the hump. There's a complete change of motivation, a complete change of execution. So now they've overcome the most difficult obstacle and now they're ready to go to work. It seems like whether it was theatrical or whether it was useful, all of the techniques kind of used at their core are helpful to prepare a warrior for war. Oh, certainly. There's clearly a lot of research and a lot of validity behind being able to use these to become a warrior, to develop physical prowess, and certainly this is derivative of different training techniques that have been culled through Chinese history. All right, thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe to Gamma Ray, like the video, share it out. And Ed, where can people find you? Uh, they can find us at our website, ekata.net. Oh, nice. And you know you can find me at Ify Wadi Way on Twitter and Instagram. And make sure you come back next week because we got some more fighting show for you.